So, by the way, you already know the answer, um, Debbie. Do you love me? Yes or no? Because Debbie and I had, had this opportunity to share not too long ago. That we, we love each other. So the answer is yes. I thought about checking on maybe so and giving it to her just to confuse her, but I'll be confusing enough tonight for everyone so we don't have to worry about that. So let's just jump right in. John chapter 21, verse 15. <clears throat> Actually, this is... Um, to kind of set up where this is, this is after Jesus' death. This is the disciples have gone back to the Sea of Galilee, Tiberias, whatever, and then they're fishing because um, they don't know what to do, and they kind of didn't really follow what, you know, they, they were just confused and didn't know what to do. And so Jesus uh, comes to them after they've been fishing all night, not catching any fish, says, throw the fish on the other side. They're like, we already did that, but okay. They catch the fish, and a ton of fish. They go up, and they, they realize it's Jesus and sit down and eat breakfast with him. So that's where this picks up. And when he asked, or when, he, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told him. A second time he asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told him. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Now, if you were paying attention, you'll realize that the third time, says Peter was grieved. Now I have a question for you. I'm going to ask this question again later, actually. The question is, was Peter's grief because he was asked three times, or hold on, Pastor Aaron, three times, or was it because the third time he was asked? Did that confuse you yet? Was that confusing? Okay, I'll say it again. Was Peter's grief because he was asked three times, or because the third time he was asked? So the problem, actually, with this, this verse is the same thing. Or actually, you know what? I think, I think we hear it sort of like this. I'm going to act it out. Um, I'll kind of paraphrase a little bit, but I think the way that we sort of hear this interaction is, uh, <clears throat> Peter, do you love me? Well, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then tend to my lambs. But Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And shepherd my sheep. But Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. I think that's how, at least when I've heard it, if, if you guys have heard this, these three verses before, that's kind of how I heard it read. That sort of feeling to it, that sort of interaction. The problem is, I think, it, I think it's similar to this. Roses are red, violets are blue. Rob shaves his head, and so should you, Pastor Aaron, because I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> the, the problem is, we, we hear that all the time. I bet I would, I would wager say 90% of us has said some, something like that at some point. Roses are red, violets are blue, blah, 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 blah. The problem is, if you walk out my back door, there's two rose bushes sitting right here, and they are not red. They're not red. They're pinkish. You know, violets actually are blue. But um, roses are all kinds of color right off the stem. I'm not talking about where they add dye and, and everything. But we don't think about it much. It's a word that we just kind of, it's like a phrase. We've heard it a lot, and it just sort of makes sense to us. And um, the same way we kind of read through this um, in English, we only have one word for love, and we read through these verses, and the word love just kind of goes, oh, okay, yeah, love, I get it. But in several other languages, especially like Greek, which Old Test most of the Old Testament was written in, or New Testament was written in, has technically there's more than three words for love, but there's three words that I'll kind of briefly go over for tonight, for tonight's purpose. Because um, I use the same word for I love cheeseburger, I love my mom, I love God, I love talking to you guys here but they actually have different meanings. They're not all, roses aren't all red in, the, in those, those different versions of love. 
So the first one I'll, I'll, I'll bring up, I should have actually put this on the screen, but it's uh, Eros, and just forget if I pronounce any of this stuff correctly or not. I'm not, I'm not Greek. So, but Eros, which is like a, uh, a, a sensual, uh, sensual love. It's where we get the word erotic from. Um, it's actually not a negative word for love. I don't know if there are, are there any kids here. <laughs> yeah, okay. There's not. It's not actually a, a negative word, although sometimes we can take it that way just because of the way it rolls off the tongue. There's actually a negative version, kind of the opposite side of it. Uh, the word starts with a P, and it would make a lot of sense if I said it. I'll let you guys figure that out. You can look it up, but uh, it's not this P that the next word is. The first one, uh, the type of love, eros, was that sensual. Um, sensual love. The second one is phileo, which is, if you guys know what the city of Philadelphia is, it's called the city of brotherly love. So you kind of get an idea from phileo, maybe what, what type of love that is, kind of brotherly love. Actually, Philadelphia is the f- version of phileo that specifically means brotherly love, but it's a, it's a I would describe it as kind of a tender, merciful, affectionate love between friends, between family. Um, in John chapter 5, verse 20, he uses this, this word for love. Actually, it says, For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing, and the Father will show him greater works than these, so that you will marvel. Funny enough, we might think that that word love is the next one that I'm going to go define. But uh, it's actually the word there that was used was phileo, from the father to the son. Uh, it's kind of that father, son, brother, sister, mother, friends, family type love. There's actually a, another one, stergos, which is not used in the New Testament, but um, it, it was used in writings around the same time as the New Testament, um, which is specifically between the husband and wife. But I'll kind of just throw that out there for a second and then... We'll pretend that wasn't one of my three. And the third one that many of you guys have probably heard, or if you haven't, you'll hear it now, but if you've been to um, Chrysalis or on the walk to Emmaus, or I'm not ruining any surprise here, um, but you'll probably hear of this type of love. Agape. Agape, or agapeo, like the action of it. Agape, or, or agapeo. That's a, who wants to say what agape is? Unconditional love. It's the unconditional love that God has for us without condition, right? It's not, a, it's not something that has to do with being a friend, being a family, anything like that. This is unconditional. This is the love that's in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, right? You guys all know that one? That's the, that's the agape that's used right there. It's also used in a famous chapter, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is... Patient, love is kind. It's, a, it's that, that word, agape, is used every single time love is used in that chapter. So, I don't know, um, I don't know if I made it really clear, so I'm going to test you guys on this, and it's okay if we get the wrong answers, but I think I'll actually clear up some of the difference between agape, phileo, and eros later. But I'm going to read a couple of, of verses of Scripture. I want you guys to shout it out what you think it is, which version Eros, agape, phileo. Just, just shout it out, okay? I'm going to read them in kind of no particular order. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Type of love there. It says he will hate one and love the other. What's the actual word love? Yell it out. You don't have to be scared. That one's actually agape. It's agape. Yep. For, he, for either he will hate one and agape the other. That's actually what's used. Next verse. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You would think that, because I said it's, a, it's like a friend thing, you would, but it's agape. Isn't this making it more clear? Isn't this clearing this up for you guys? Love your neighbor as yourself. It's actually the word agape being used. Now, this is kind of important um, because we, we just heard from Lori's story that there were two different translators that, that gave the message from English, the message of the gospel from English into blah, 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 what? English to French, then French to... Anyway, 
I think there's like a gas station called that, right? Up north, something like that? Anyway. Wawa, not anyway, sorry. Woman in Russia. Okay. Wrong area, Africa. Uh, so let me continue on. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Which? That's a good one. You guys got that one. All right. <laughs> Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him. He said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. So Jesus, Jesus felt a love for him. Agape. Okay. Let me skip through. We are, uh, I've kind of already said this one, but I'll give it to you anyway. But now, faith, hope, love. Abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Agape. Also, Romans 5, 8, very popular. But God demonstrated his own love towards us that, whoever, uh, or that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Agape. That one's a pretty easy one. Um, let me try and trick you guys up maybe a little bit. When you pray, you are not to be like hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and street corners. It's phileo is the word that's used. That one's Matthew 6, 5. And then this one, woe, but woe to you Pharisees. This is coming from Jesus. You pay tithe of mint and rue and every kind of garden herb, and yet you dis disregard justice and the love of God. Agape, that one's right. And then we continue, but these things you should have done without neglect, neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the chief seats in the synagogue and the respectful greetings in the marketplace. You love, it would sound so, you'd think so, because it's almost like a, but he's actually, Jesus is actually kind of pointing out what kind of distorted love these guys do, and he actually says, you agape, the chief seats in the synagogues and respect, respectful uh, greetings in the marketplace. Jump down a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of time. Well, actually, I'll just go ahead and, and skip along. You guys kind of you guys kind of get it, probably. that It's not always that easy. Um, if you just read a, a verse and you just go, love means love, you might kind of look at it differently than when you actually look at which version of love it's actually being talked about. Um, I, would, I would say... Um, I would say that the, the interaction between Peter and Jesus actually went more like this before I explain what words were actually used. Simon Peter, do you love me? Well, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then tend, tend to my lambs. Simon Peter, do you love me? Well, Lord, you, you know I love you. And shepherd my sheep. Simon, do you love me? You know all things, Lord. You, you know that I love you. Then tend to my sheep. See, if we want to go ahead and put the verses back up here, what actually happens in this, if you want me to say it a little bit differently, it goes like this. Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you agape owe me? Do you agape? Do you have agape for me? Peter responds, Yes, Lord, you, you know I phileo you. Did you know that? Did you guys kind of read that the first time you read it? Did you hear it that way at all? It's a little bit different. The story takes on kind of a different meaning. He asks him a second time, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter's response, Yes, Lord, you know I phileo you. Okay? So in the third time, it's actually different. Peter doesn't say, or Jesus doesn't say, Peter, do you agape me? He says, Peter, do you phileo me? He actually questions, do you actually love me like a brother? Do you actually have that love for me? And it says, then Peter's grieved. Now it's tough in, in English when we use that same word for love, love of a brother and love of God and love of cheeseburger and such. But I'd say this, to try and break it down a, a little bit and clarify it the best way I can. Phileo is not felt between people who are at enmity with each other. You know, we can feel phileo towards our friends and family, but we do not feel phileo towards people that we don't like. Phileo is actually something that we share between people that we like. Agapeo, we do regardless of whether we like them or not. 
And actually, um, I think Rob said this a few weeks ago. It's John 13, 35. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. It says, by this. What is this? If you have love for one another. Not phileo, agape. If you agape one another is how everyone will know that we are Christians. So, I don't know how, when you're driving down the side of the road, if you see someone on the side of the road, if, if you can really say you phileo them when you know them or not, but you can certainly agape them like we're called to do. We're all called to love one another, love each other as ourselves, in the sense the unconditional love that has no, no you know, doesn't matter if we know them or not. That's what we're called to do. And so the challenge for you guys this week is actually to think about, I would love to go through, love to go through the whole uh, gospel and, and break down every single word. Actually, I kind of I did, and it's really lengthy, and I gave you guys a small snippet of it. But to actually think about that word love when you are reading the gospel and when you are talking about love yourself to, to one another and that we are called to love um, unconditionally. Now, I don't know where you're at in your, uh, in your spiritual walk with God. And as the band comes up, um, maybe, maybe you've asked this question before, do I love God? And you answered yes. And maybe now you might be for the first time saying, do I, do I agape God? Do I phileo God? I'm not really sure. So I want you guys to ask that, that same question to yourself this week. I want you to take a piece of paper and actually write down. Um, just say, who do I love? Phileo. You can spell it however you want. Don't even worry about it. And write down who you love. And then who do I love? Agape. And write it down. And think about that list and pray over that list. Because um, we're called to agape. All. Now the funny thing about it is Peter, Peter was kind of sort of a chicken. He was kind of cowardly at times. And a lot of the great men of the Bible, they were, uh, they, were, they were given titles that they really weren't initially or all the time. You know, you think of Abraham's considered to be a man of great faith, but Abraham actually questioned and lacked faith until the end a lot of times. He actually was, and David is a, God, a, a man after God's own heart, but David, if you read through the scriptures, was after his own heart a lot of times, but he became the man after God's own heart. And Peter, the pebble, was the rock, right? He's supposed to be the rock that, that, that Jesus built the church on. Well, Peter was a, a little pebble. He became a rock. You know, so maybe, I don't know where you're at in your life, but guess what we can take from the examples of others from, from, uh, from the Bible? That it's not about where you, where you fall now and your love. I challenge you to continue to press onward and think about what love you have and don't let where you may or may not be discourage you from becoming the, the person that God truly calls you to be. So. Father God, we thank you for this, uh, this opportunity to just kind of learn some of your word tonight and just a new aspect on love is such a kind of confusing word sometimes for us um, with all the, all the chatter that goes around, around with what love really is and, and all the hype behind it. And God, we just ask that you clarify what you really want us to hear tonight and truly show us what love, what agape is the difference between just a, a friendship love and that truly unconditional love, God, and that you can start to work on our hearts to be unconditional with our love for everyone. Amen. You know, just like Peter, just like Peter, um, I think he was probably scared when, when uh, he finally got the question from Jesus, do you actually phileo me? And uh, the great thing is that Jesus never, never leaves us. He never forsakes us. You know, and that same Peter did actually eventually become um, crucified and hung upside down. He did become that man. He did show God his agape. But never once in there, never once for a moment did God forsake us or leave him. So 
just keep that in mind.